five, four, three. <laughs> Welcome, students, to Monk Meditation. The show about monks in the world of Warcraft. We have a new brewmaster joining us. Ghostcrawler is leaving Blizzard. And we have some big news for Mistweavers going into Warlords. This is Monk Meditation, Episode 10. Here's your host, Chai T. Greetings to all you wonderful monks out there in Azeroth and Draenor. This is Chai T from Airy Peak US, and I hope all you US people had a great Thanksgiving and that none of you got trampled going to Black Friday Chris, uh, Christmas shopping. So we have a great show tonight, but I do want to start out by apologizing for last episode's audio quality. We have the problem fixed going forwards. So we're now in double digits in episodes, so we're growing up episode 10. Woohoo! Without further ado, oh, let's introduce tonight's hosts, including a brand new addition. Let's go first to the man with the thunderous voice, just not really today, back from his trip to where he would call the frozen tundra of Washington State, from Airy Peak US and the Convert to Raid Guild, Daikatsu. How are you, man? You know, when they laughed at me when I said over Twitter that I was going to go to sunny Seattle, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, Seattle, it's never sunny over there. It was gorgeous, my god. I think it got up to like the 40s and 50s at the end of my trip. But I had to get sick. Of course, it's not a trip without getting sick. (laughs) All right, next from the nice and toasty warm Florida, tossing heels and uplifting with the best of them. Now Yuki, also from Airy Peak and Convert to Raid. How you doing, man? I'm good, how are you, Chai T? Doing great myself. Coltrane for president. No kidding. Thank Love you so much, intro. Coltrane, for uh, for doing that voiceover work for us. We appreciate it. So Coltrane's from the Convert to Raid podcast, convertraid.com if you're interested. All right. And we now go overseas to the land of the rising sun to my wind-walking partner in crimes against Mogumanity from Airy Peak and Convert to Raid, Air. Hello, howdy, everybody. How are you all doing today? It's a wonderful day to be a monk. Good. It is. It's always a wonderful day to be a monk. <laughs> it's true. And finally, I introduce to you our new host, covering all things Brewmaster from the Storm Reaver US server on the Drow Raid team, Captain Crunch. What's up, everyone? How you all doing? Woo! You- oh, Woo! yeah. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining Very us. Very good. Yeah. All right. Hey, C- Captain, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I've been tanking since BC. Uh, I love my monk. I probably won't ever leave my monk, and that's just leave it at that. Um, I'm SimCraft Dev. I love numbers, um, and that'll pretty much be it. I'll just keep moving forward and look forward to the, the new expansion, that's for sure. All right, well, let's get into our rating progress in the Siege of Orgamar. Storm. <laughs> Earth. Ha! And fire! Whoa! <laughs> All right, so I'll start off with Rolling Thunder. Uh, so we got spoils down. So that one took a little bit. Uh, we were down a couple healers. Duke was gone, and, and our Paladin healer was gone. Uh, but we filled in with some great pugs from CTR. Uh, so Thok uh, is now enjoying pandas for breakfast. So there's <laughs> lots and lots of death. lizard's favorite treat. Yes. So we'll be working on that. We'll be extending and pushing forward. So hopefully we'll get that Good one Good to down. hear. Good to hear. All right, now Yuki, Edamame Enterprise, how you doing? Then? Uh, well, due to the holidays last week, I was unable to raid on Tuesday, but the week before, um, we got all four bo- all four bosses down on Tuesday, which is awesome. And then Thursday, we worked on Galacris and got him down finally, um, and got all the way up to shamans, and we wiped on shamans at twenty one percent. So. Oof. Hopefully we go back in Tuesday, get them down, keep moving forward. But uh, it was a great, great raid week. Are you guys doing the two tank or the three tanks? On the shaman? On shamans, yeah. Uh, two tank. Two tank. Yeah, that one's a yeah. hectic fight. We actually yeah. went. We actually went back on our team. Uh, we were trying to three tanks and we were wiping a lot, so we actually went back and did two tank and one shot it. So, okay. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, air iron deficiency. 
Uh, see, after the show, we had a pretty good week. Uh, we were progressing on shamans at the time, and uh, we were we do a three trank strategy for heroic shamans, and uh, we were able to push through and get them down. So, uh, yeah, it was Congrats. pretty intense because you know at the very end, it, uh, just because of the DPS requirements, we had to bring them together at the very end there with our ten man team. So, uh, it was hectic, a lot going on, but we all stayed alive did pretty well and uh now we're working on naz and uh you know it's i technically they say he's about the second easiest fight so we're approaching the number of wipes we had originally on Immersius, but you know we're seeing the last bit of naz a uh, couple 10 percent pulls and hopefully this next lockout will get him down and go for 8 of 14 10 man heroic nice job yeah i know that uh that last 10 percent on nazgrim is the make or break Mm -hmm. and that, that's for sure uh, that always gets yep. a little crazy so, well, uh, and heroic you're just sitting back and you're let you know we, we're doing the strategy where you let them do 10 waves of ads then try to push them and uh then you have about a minute to burn them down uh, after the defensive stance so we're working through that right now so it should be a good week with some more gear and stuff too okay and captain crunch your raid team is drow is that correct that is correct all right how are you guys doing you're uh Good. Uh, we're 12 out of 14 heroic 25 men at the moment. Um, we got raid tonight, so hopefully maybe we can be 13 out of 14 heroic. That would be awesome. But so working on Klaxi holiday now. weeks. Yeah. So I mean, it's holiday week though, so I mean, mm. might be hit or miss. We I know uh, last raid day that we had uh, it was a little hit and miss with our uh, attendance because everyone's traveling around, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All that fun stuff, but. Hopefully, you know, being Monday, everyone's getting back, and we can uh, knock it out and get it done, and you know, maybe hopefully work on heroic garage next week. That would be exciting. Yeah. I love wiping. <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> and that's a long fight too, so and that's gonna take some time. Aren't they always though? Those last ones, then, yeah, those are usually yeah, pretty long. Those last ones are always the longest. Yep. All right. Well, time to get caught up in the crazy whirlwind of WoW news in. Dizzying haze. <laughs> All right, so the big news of the week is the guy that we always reach to on Twitter to discuss what was going on with the monk class, Ghost Crawler. He to. is stepping down. Uh, he will be departing the role of lead systems designer, which he was most of his time in WoW. Um, so, what are you guys' thoughts on that? He will be missed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean,. That's pretty much it. He was always the man to go to, to ask questions and talk to and relate to, so hopefully they can find someone to uh, to replace him and fill his, uh, fill his shoes, which were pretty big. Yeah, I mean, he, he always answered real honestly, real candidly, um, didn't really hold back, which is, it was, you know, he's one of the first ones to really do that, so it was really good to see. And, uh, you know, he definitely was a, yeah, he's a bit of a diverse person at times. Uh, for the people who did like what he had to say and thought he controlled everything versus those who kind of understood that he's just a voice and he, he kind of molded but he was more of a voice than anything so uh, I, yeah I'm, I'm sad to see him go yeah he had a uh, very very thick skin especially with uh, all the people on the forums all the people on Twitter and he always to me he always stayed positive through all that and uh, I always liked that about him and mm -hmm. Like you guys said, he will be missed. Yeah, I thought the interesting part about him leaving was that they might not refill his position. So we might not have a technical systems a lead systems designer going forward. Um, but in his place, we've got Celestalon who has filled in the gap. Mm -hmm. And sure. if you thought Ghostcrawler was active, then I think Celestalon's job is to put out 10,000 tweets a day. Right. <laughs> Man, this guy is talking to everybody that just tweets yeah. at him. He's, he will answer just about any question you toss him as long as it's about World of Warcraft. If you want to learn about the birds and the bees, tweet your parents. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, going back to uh, Ghostcrawler, though, it's, I remember when he joined Twitter. That was kind of a big mm -hmm. buzz. Like, he wasn't on there for yeah. a long time. And well, he, he had been quiet on the forums for so long, be tired of the expectations of him on those mm -hmm. forums where, you know, if you wrote a 30-page monologue on why Paladin should get X ability and he replies back with, yeah, we agree. 
Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, he really liked the brevity uh, in the tweets, and mm-hmm. I think that that's really a good format for it because it's, it has to be short questions, direct to the point, um, mm-hmm. and he can give those short and direct to the point answers in return, and that fit yeah. his style quite well because he is a snarky guy. <laughs> <laughs> But Celeste, well, I, I always I always loved him in uh, uh, the BlizzCons of the past, where you know, especially this last one where they had the big hour and a half one. It's like, all right, so let's play you. Let's say you play a Ret Paladin, like most of you do. He just seemed to love going after Ret Paladins more than most. And now that we know he plays a Holy Priest, it's obvious why. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Surprised he didn't ha- hammer after the Mistweavers. So. All right. So. Celestalon, uh, as you mentioned, so the guy's name is Chad Nervig. He's part of the technical design team responsible for systems, uh, from class mechanics to new features. Uh, he has been very vocal on Twitter so far, and uh, he's he tweeted back to Ro, uh, who does the Realm Maintenance podcast earlier today, and Ro asked if it was fair to say that any question that would have been directed to Ghostcrawler can now be directed to him, and he says, yes, that's fair. So he's going to be the new guy kind of stepping up that uh, community aspect on Twitter for those types of uh, questions. And I'm really liking the guy. He is very open and frank. Uh, Anything he can give, he will give. Uh, Mm -hmm. He drops some big bombs we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, I know he's answered a few of your questions too, Duke. Oh, yeah. And the thing is that right now, since we're in the sweet spot where essentially 5.x is done we're done with missa pandaria from a design perspective from a quest from art everything we're done so now they really get to focus on what they want to do how what they think will take the game to the next step because you don't want to make major changes from you know 5.1 to 5.2 you don't want to overhaul classes in that way so he's really talking up a bunch of stuff and, I mean, we'll get to haste breakpoints going away. We'll get to what he has to say on fist weaving. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we can talk about, just the things that he's tweeted. I think almost half the show is his content. Right. Well, let's get into that. And <clears throat> now, to keep your spirits up while the world changes around you. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Uplift. Don't worry, I'm sure it happens to other monks too. So, uh, at Suplift, he was on our Mistweaver roundtable, he asked Celestalon, what do you plan on doing with fist weaving? And the answer was pretty interesting. He says they are going to be preserving fist weaving going to 6.0, but it will be a separate stance. Ooh. So. Where, where's, where's, where's that sounder? What? Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of happy with this. Fist weaving is my preferred method of playing a monk because it feels more monkish to just be doing sweet kung fu instead of like I will magically beam green healing stuff at this person. Right. Um, and yeah, I like I the fact that like it's going to be a stance, which means you have to pick it at the beginning because mm-hmm. if you switch stances in the middle of the fight, some of your buffs get reset, your mana might get reset, things like that might happen. Either that, or they'll allow uh, what Reglitch is now calling stance weaving, which you always got to add weaving at the end of everything a monk does, right? right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, it, it seemed he followed up with some additional tweets. There were more questions going out. And so he indicated it's going to be a new stance. It's still going to use mana. And it's not going to be at all like the Paladin Chakra. So Priest Chakra. Priest Chakra. I'm sorry. Priest Chakra. <laughs> I don't play either class. That I don't know what I'm talking about. awesome news. <laughs> yeah. This weaving, it seems like such a unique style. You know, it's, it's unlike, you know... It's just very intensive in what you're doing and what you have to pay attention to. Because not only have you have to heal stuff, but you have to. You're essentially you're there in melee. You're having to watch out for all the crud that is there. Just that usually destroys your melee, and uh, it's it's a really neat style of healing. I, I like it a lot so far. Yeah, it's it's going to be really interesting though how they do it because right now um, we're allowed to cherry pick, as Celestalon mm-hmm. calls it, and. This uh, makes it interesting, like jab, jab, uplift from the previous thing. It's like right now you're in fist weaving, you're going, you know, you're jabbing, blackout, kicking, throwing, renewing, miss, uplifts, and everything like that. So you're bouncing between all these different things, and you can cherry pick the chi generators and the chi expenders. Um, mm-hmm. They're going to take that away. So mist weaving, when you go into, it's probably going to be still the, the wise serpent for mist weaving. 
uh, when you yeah. go into that stance, you're probably not going to have uh, jab, tiger palm, or blackout kick. They're probably going to be taking those away. Mm. Um, and mm. so they all. Celestion said that maximum heals per second is going to be purely mist weaving, no fist weaving. So you go into that stance, and but you can flip over. And they said that there has to be some cost of switching modes. It doesn't take much. One global cooldown will may suffice. So you may not lose your chi, you may not lose your any mana or anything like that. You yep. just lose a global cooldown, and you can switch instantly to punch punch. But you don't have your renewing mist, and you don't have your uplift. But you'll have other things yeah. to do it. I think the major change you're going to see is that if you're in stance of the Y serpent, our standard one, you won't get any eminence healing. And if you switch over to this new fist weaving stance, stance of the fist weaver, I guess, you're going to get eminence. He you're going to get eminence healing. You're going to get uh, the blackout kick, where you're going to get the muscle memory procking and all of that stuff. So you're going to get what people consider your standard fist weaving now. Except if it's part of a separate stance, now they can actually give you something like a rotation, something like a priority, so that you know, mm -hmm. essentially, you can go full F HPS. If you want to go and you switch over to your mist weaving stance, you can go full DPS if you want to go um, Windwalker. Or you can go fist weaving, which is going to be half and half, which is really interesting because Cestal Celestalon had a tweet earlier this week in which he was talking about that their uh, um, group sizes are going to be kind of uh, uh, going around the idea that you're going to have two tanks, two and a half healers, and five and a half DPS. So now we're that half healer, half DPS. Ooh. Hmm. Maybe that means the Windwalkers will finally get their healing utility too. <laughs> that would only be if nice. you yeah, respect so. mist weaving and stand in yeah. the mist weaver <laughs> stance. Because you can yeah, changes. Makes... Are they going to put stances like to do with druids, where like you're one class and you can go from stance to stance? It's already it's in there. The mist weaver cool. can bounce just like the brewmaster can bounce between <clears throat> uh, sturdy ox and uh, fierce tiger. Uh, you right. never actually but do Windwalker is only limited to the well, Yeah, Windwalkers are limited to a single stance, and I don't think you're going to see Windwalkers. You're and not going to get he healing as a, as a Windwalker. You're, yeah. you're not going to. Oh, unless they were to do something crazy and do that half stance Windwalker side where you can only Windwalker or Fist Weaving, and Mist Weaver can do Fist Weaving or healing. Mm -hmm. That would like be that. an interesting way to do it, but. If you're a Windwalker, it's because you want to go DPS, and if you're a Mistweaver, yep. it's because you want to go Healer. So there's going to be very special snowflakes out there that are going to pick one or the other and do this. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It intrigues me very much. I mean, yeah. I would really like to play it, but it's by giving it its own stance instead of its own spec, that makes it so... If you're playing the healer, it's like, okay, well, we can push out a little bit more DPS. I will go switch mm -hmm. into that stance and do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, they have to ensure that the stat priorities are the same. Because right now, if you if you play a Fist Weaver, and that's your specialty, you have different strats, uh, stat strategies than yeah. if yeah. you're Mist Weaving. So they don't, have, they don't have to go that they don't have it's to say, hey, very you're still different, but it's and everything. You, you basically, you want to aim to be about 80% efficient with the gear you're on. And then that last 20% is where you go, I specifically want to do X. Right. Yeah, so it's it's going to be very interesting, and it is very intriguing to me. I would actually really like to, to test that out. So what I would like to see is in that new fist weaving stance to have a uh, better rotation. Because, I mean, right now it's, it's for fist weaving, you have four buttons. You know, your, your rushing jade wind, your blackout kick, tiger palm, and jab. And that's about it. That's Crackling Jade Lightning from time to time, you know, lightning weaving. But it's uh, it's pretty limited. I mean, having a full-on DPS rotation, like you're DPSing and by doing that you're healing, that would be yeah. really cool. I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now the other thing they need to do is in the stance is increase the range of eminence healing. Yes. Yeah. What is it now, 100 yards? 20. Yeah, 20, it's pretty low. 20 yards around you, 20 yards around your statue, and you each contribute 25%. So if somebody is overlapping both your statue and you, you get a, they get 50% of your DPS as heals. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's big news for the Mistweaver. You guys have some big changes coming, but I think it's really exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the, the scariest <laughs> thing is going to be for people who enjoy actual Mistweaving. 
uh, and they don't do any of the fist waving things because that's going to change some things. They're not going to get <laughs> eminence. They're not going to get uh you know jab and blackout kick and all that some of the stuff's being taken away from them so they're going to be turning into pretty much a, a channel healer type play style and, and i know stronger heals to make up for the lack of eminence right so i know reglitch mm -hmm. uh posted he's not too thrilled about going to a mainly channel heal but i say let's wait to see what they do first oh. It's what we are now, to tell you the truth. We're a channel healer. Right. Um, the biggest issue that's going to come out of this is that now every single person is going to go, hey, fist weaving will do 5% more healing overall because of the DPS that you're also doing because now it takes less time to kill a boss, so you want to do fist weaving instead of mist weaving. Mm -hmm. And anyone who says, no, but I want to do a mist weaver, they're going to be essentially wrong. If you're in that level, I mean... They're talking five percent different. Yeah, there's people in majority. LFR that go after you if you're a mage playing fire. Right. But sure. if you are so, so, so only one of two healers, if you have two healers and a fifteen man, you know, you're pushing it, you're gonna need all the heals per second you got. And so you're yeah. gonna be staying mist weaving the whole time. But if you're the third healer in there, they may push you to, to fist weaving. You have that option, whereas some of the other healing classes do not. So that's gonna be I think this is going to make fist weavers or mist weavers in general very desired in uh, 6.0 in the initial. Or they just keep picking priests. Yeah. Because <laughs> atonement healing is the exact same thing and they put up better DPS and heals. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. There's a long way to go until 6.0. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so now we enter the Siege of Orgrimmar once again, facing down the third raid encounter. Corrupted by pride, we must pass the test to proceed. It's time to take on Nurashen in... Fist of Fury. Uh, yeah! It's go time. Yes, it is. All right. Nurashen is an interesting encounter, and one that uh, Windwalkers in particular are in love with because holy crap did we destroy meters and there's a couple of ways to do it uh storm earth and fire is going to be your biggest generator on this fight so there's a couple of different strategies i'll go over one that i like to do and and air has a different one i know so for me i like to go down first and since i'm the raid leader i get to do that so i hop into the first uh portal i take out the ads uh and when i come back out I stay on the boss the whole time, and any ad that comes out, I throw my clone onto. And any damage you do to the ad will kick back and do it to uh, the boss. And so each ad you have out, you want to have uh, three clones up as much as possible because that way you're doing a lot more DPS to the main boss. And so just staying on that the whole time is great. Uh, so, Air, you have a different strategy? Yeah, so I'm spending some time on some of the, the one of the threads on MMO Champ. It's called Monks versus Raid Mechanics, and one of the things that comes up there is uh, that we discovered that your clones actually don't uh, uh, get the debuff from the giant uh, amalg amalg amalgamation, amalgamation, amalgam amalgamation. Yes, <laughs> uh, the giant, the big guy you should be killing, and. Uh, so if you pop, uh, what you can do, yeah, the big ad, you pop a clone on that guy, you, your clone will not suffer from the reduced damage. So that leaves you to essentially just focus on the ads. It allows you to get your other DPS in the realm first and have them pop out. Um, just so they can have the increased damage over more of the fight. Yeah. So um, that's um, one way to kind of trick things a little bit. It's really hard to see exactly how much damage you do compared to everyone else because once you go into the realm... Uh, the meters get kind of skewed because you don't see anyone else's stuff. But um, once you get into that realm, storm, earth, and fire everything. You stay in the big ad for interrupts uh, and stuns. Pop two up in the small guys and just make sure you let your uh, raid know that you're going to have uh, essentially one big and two little ads coming up at the same time because you'll be able to get out of that very, very quickly. Yes. I also like to use uh, diffuse magic specifically for this because if you're going around, you know, chasing ads, you happen to have the big beam coming your way, the big death beam, pop a diffuse magic, roll right through it, and with a 90% damage reduction, it won't be a problem. So it allows you to get a lot quicker time up on the ads yeah. with, with minimal healing 
Uh, you can apologize for your heaters, but it shouldn't be too bad. Air, watch what about your talk? mic, by the way. Hmm. Your mic is rubbing against your zipper. Sorry. <laughs> It, he he doesn't have gas, I swear, or at least not that bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, other talent choices: rushing Jade Wind uh, can be exceptionally helpful in twenty-five man because ads are everywhere. So you throw your clones out, hit rushing Jade Wind, you're hitting tons of ads, which is really good. Uh, in ten man, you can still stay with rushing Jade Wind, but I would pref- I would suggest going with Zhuen. Yeah. Uh, Chi Burst and Zen Sphere has its place here because most of the time all your entire raid team is stacked except for the tanks. Uh, Charging Ox Wave is my choice here as it can stun the big ads at range if the tanks can't get it right away. Uh, so you don't have to be right close to it for leg sweep and there's no weapons to be disarmed so ring a piece doesn't matter. Uh, and as uh, Air said, Diffuse Magic is the one to go with here because it does more and more magic damage as the fight goes on, and so you can really help out your healers by popping this uh, after 50%. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Duke, what about healing? Well, this is an interesting one since fist weaving straight up is not going to be as effective if you're just targeting the boss for the same reason. You're going to have that uh, 50% damage reduction. So at the beginning of the fight, if you want to stay fist weaving, you're better off focusing on the small ads that appear whenever somebody goes down into the, the other realm. Other than that, there's not really a lot of damage going out. But you can help out whenever something bad happens. Uh, there's always the explosions that occur. There's always the mistakes that people make. Um, you might want to just stay focused on strict mist weaving if you are really looking for constant output. Once you go down, take care of your solo uh, test and come back up. At that point, you can start fist weaving and be at 100% output. The really interesting thing is that the solo test for healers, as far as a monk is concerned, is a lot easier if you just DPS that thing down because it doesn't have a lot of health. It can put out a little bit of damage, but nothing that you can't just spot heal real quick with a couple of channeled um, soothing myths. And as long as you're not standing on top of one of the guys, so because they won't move from those void zones that appear, don't stand on top of the guys that you're in there with. Just take care of what you need to do, and you'll be out of there in about 15, 20 seconds tops, honestly. If you just want to stand in one place and do channel Jade Lightning, you're going to be out in about 20 seconds. All right. Now, anything to add into that? Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with Duke here. Um, just place the statue right under the boss um, so that you can have the full effect no matter where you're stacking in the room as far as the upside. Um, another thing I agree with is DPSing. Um, I'm pretty much going to focus on raid teams that are having problems hitting that enrage timer um, if you're noticing that you're wiping um, I'm gonna use my raid for an example um, around maybe two to five percent and the raid wipes that's only like what two to seven million health on the boss mm -hmm. so what I do is for talents I pick Zuyan so I could get the eminence eminence off of him and I also spec into Chi Wave, which is the one that bounces to every target. And what I do this fight is with the statue in the middle, Tiger Palm, uh, Blackout Kick, um, get your muscle memory and your eminence up, uh, Chi Wave, and Crackling J Lightning. Just spam that. While you, The only healing spells you should be doing is Renewing Mist and Uplift. Um, I noticed that at the end of the fight, I pop Zui in every three minutes, um, my heals weren't affected at all because I was the first one down below, so I came back up. I was doing 98k heals per second just by doing Crackling J Lightning, uh, Chi Wave, Renewing Mist, and Uplift. And the Chi Wave and the Crackling J Lightning, I looked on the DPS meter, <laughs> I did 10 million damage. So you're helping out with healing and you're helping out with damage, and you're killing the boss before the Enrage hits. Um, Getting a little yeah. bit of that lightning weaving in there, it looks like. Yep, that's the only fight I just spam the hell out of Crackling Jade Lightning. It's a good way to add DPS to any fight, really, because Crackling Jade Lightning scales well with our standard mist weaving stats. Mm -hmm. So every time that you make yourself a stronger mist weaver, you also get the stronger Crackling Jade Lightning. Mm -hmm. The more haste you have, it's not like other dots. It's a channeled spell, which means the duration is actually gets a little bit shorter. And it doesn't add new ticks on the end. And instead, what happens is that you can just cast more channel jade lightnings. 
-hmm. And it also gives you cheese, so if your Renewing Mists are out there, Crackling J Lightning, you uh, get Chi with the, your, I mean, uh, Renewing Mist, you get, I'm sorry, I hear an Echo. Um, renewing Mist, Crackling J Lightning, and then you get Chi from that, you use it for Uplift. So. Yep. Right on. Sorry. All right, and All right. Yeah. Captain Crunch, are, uh, sure. any tips there? Um, I mean, it's really a basic fight for a tank. Uh, diffuse magic, like every muck knows, it's pretty helpful here, um, just in case if, you know, excess of magic damage. Uh, Transcendence actually is actually kind of useful. I use it um, to move around. It's uh, a little bit easier. If you got to go from, you know, blue marker to purple marker, you can drop a Transcendence because you know you're eventually going to get back to that marker. Um, and Zuen, actually, I use him a lot for um, to tank the big axe for me, um, as well as DPS the boss. If you're really quick and you're good with shift commands, you can actually use that pet as a tank. Stats die so fast. So, I mean, if you're good with it, you can get to just have that, you know, Zuen tank to add. You stay on the boss, add dies, Zuen goes back to the boss. I mean, it's what, 45 seconds or so that you get of uh, free DPS on the boss. It works out well. I mean, that's pretty much the only really big thing for, for monk tanks for this fight. I mean, we go downstairs, we pretty much blow up dad like it's nothing and then we come back up and you know the other tanks usually have like two stacks so you're just basically you know twiddling your thumbs for three stacks um waiting for that other tank you know to get a stacks and other than that it's just that's pretty much it man just zuen is the man on this fight for monk tanks yeah zuen is a very unutilized talent especially that taunt um yes that's for damn sure just funny because nobody liked that taunt when it was around, and now everyone's like, oh, <laughs> wait. Yeah. Like, oh, I could control this now. Oh, okay, this is now, you know. But yeah, I wish more monks would use it as more of a, you know, a, a utility rather than, like, oh, let me just turn this off and never use it again. Um, I see that a lot, but mm. it's pretty much the only tips I got for this fight. Okay, well, now, students, it's time to meditate and expand our knowledge in... Transcendence. All right, so back to Celestalon. Haste, breakpoints, and warlords of Draenor. So, There's so much going on here. Yes. So this is, this this is going to be a huge change all across the board. And this is going to be scary to a lot of people because one of the things that they were talking about when it comes to raid encounter design that Ian Hasekosis was talking about was how things are going to scale. And they want to get rid of breakpoints. They're getting rid of everything that has a breakpoint including haste right now if you look at a graph of haste for your average mistweaver it's a bunch of peaks with values right and basically these peaks are the breakpoint you want to hit after that you have a steep drop off and then it kind of goes up a little bit until you get back to that plateau that's gone in poor lord of draenor and the reason it's gone let's talk a little bit caution math um <laughs> Right now, haste can actually shorten the tick, which shortens the overall time for your dot or hot. Mm -hmm. Haste now will not shorten a spell. So if a spell channels for 10 seconds, it's going to always do 10 seconds worth of damage. What's going on is that you're going to get a partial tick added to the end of a hot or dot, according to haste. Best way to explain this. If you've got a dot with eight ticks and you have 20% haste, you will gain a ninth, a ninth full tick, and then you will gain a tenth tick at 60% the duration and strength of your other ticks. Yeah, so there are still technically breakpoints in where you get a full tick again, and then it'll switch to another yeah. tick. But it's not where, oh, well, I'm at 9,672 haste, which gives me my exact break point. Oh, I just got another piece that took me to 10,000. That yeah. 400 haste is a complete waste. It's not going to be yeah. a waste anymore. You'll always get a benefit from every piece, every uh, tick of haste you have. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be totally linear. If you have 27.83 haste, you're going to get 27.83% more ticks. 
Wow. Now, there's some other stuff that they're talking about. We're, we're going to stick with a little bit of gear now, and I know this isn't in the show notes because I just read it, but apparently they're also going to get rid of base health. All health will come from stamina. Wow. What does that also mean? There will not be any base damage or base healing on spells. Your stats directly create the amount of damage you do. What that means is that all of these stats are going to be useful to somebody. All of these secondary stats are going to be useful. The primary stats are always useful. You always, a, a, a monk never goes, no, 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 I'm good on intellect, thanks. <laughs> so but, what does this mean? This is like pretty much a fix for Reforge, and at the same time, a lot of people are going to be fighting over gear? Yeah. What, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have... Uh, let's say I'm boss number two in the in the ogre compound. It drops a leather piece with crit and haste. Any leather wearing person that can use that combination of crit and haste is eligible to roll for it, and then it'll just change to agility or intellect according to what it what spec you're wearing. Hmm. So now, but this also but this also means that crit will scale <laughs> up, haste will scale linearly. So anytime that you're thinking I'm, I don't I don't want any more pieces with haste, you're good. This also means that hopefully they fix our mastery because right now if I get a piece with mastery, I get pissed. Oh, with, with gear drop, that means instead of having an int piece of leather drop along with an agility piece of leather, you get two pieces of regular leather. That so hopefully it won't affect who gets what so much. It just that yeah. It, it, just, it also means it, it also means a loot table is going to be a lot smaller exactly. because now you won't have to design two pieces of intellect, mm -hmm. uh, two pieces of leather with the same secondary statting. You just do one. Mm -hmm. That means this, more room for trinkets and, and, and rings and all the other stuff, which is where our spec is going to be completely defined. Oh, if, if we have no base stats anymore, that means that there's really, it's putting, they're essentially putting an end to the twink bracket of naked raiding. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> what because they'll have the one hit point. <laughs> Down they go. Hogger all over again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it's gonna be really interesting at the low levels because the gear that you get when you start off with is white and has no stats. Yeah. Yeah, so this is has some bearing on the other classes as well. I mean or specs. Mm -hmm. uh, Windwalker, uh Fist of Fury no longer will shorten by haste. You'll have the right. same amount of time, it'll just do mm -hmm. uh you'll get well, more tips uh, of damage, right? That's th th we're only talking about hots and dots. Fist of Fury is channeled. Okay. So I think what'll end up happening is that it still has the same amount of ticks. It's just a shorter length overall. Now they haven't said anything about channeled spells. Right now they're only talking about hots and dots. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So that is a good distinction then. So our blackout kick dot would be at a full length instead of a shorter length of the same amount of damage. Exactly. It's okay. always going to be X. So and haste is going to be a more of a throughput uh, stat rather than kind of a, yeah. a utility stat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's going to be really interesting because now every single spec is going to say, well, one point of mastery gets me X DPS, one point of haste gets me Y DPS, and one point of crit gets me Z DPS. So which one do you want over the other? Right. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's going to be that last 20% optimization where you're talking about what enchant you're going to get and what gems you're going to get if you have anything with a socket on, uh, what non-armor pieces you're going to get, because that is really what's going to define your spec. Uh, they've said that there won't be, um, the primary stats won't be on rings and trinkets and neck pieces anymore. So you're not going to have an intellect ring. You're just going to have a ring with crit and haste and maybe spirit. Right. So this, this is going to be very, <coughs> very interesting then because we may not have best in slot anymore. It's like, it seems that they're trying to make crit and haste and of course, mastery is always going to be weird, but crit and haste are, are both throughput, uh, stats. And so you get more crit, you're going to do more damage. You get more haste, you're going to do more damage and they're going to be pretty even. Uh, whereas before we were like, well, we want more haste cause we need the dots to tick faster and things like that. Not the case anymore. So, Ooh, man, lots to think about on that one. Exciting stuff. Yeah. So I think this, you're still this would going be to be very good for Ask Mr. Robot. <laughs> I, I would assume. Ask Mr. Robot is through the moon about this because now they don't have to spend ninety percent of their R and D figuring out how to reforge hidden expertise properly. Right. Now they can, as they're saying, now we can do the cool stuff we've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to get rid of gear. best in slot. You're still going to have a best in slot, 
But what's going to happen now is that instead of going, oh, that's not my best in slot, so I don't want it, and it gets DE'd, every it's single piece pretty is, close. is yeah. going to have the potential to be great for you. Right. All right, that's a lot of uh, information. Celestalon is blowing our mind. <laughs> so follow that person on Twitter now if you haven't. C-E-L-E-S-T-A-L-O-N. Do it now. <laughs> yeah, this, this was a tweet he sent out two hours ago talking about, hey, yeah, there's no base damage or healing on spells anymore either. It's scaling as everything. So I've been following it. Reglitch, uh, Suplift, Affinity. They've all just been talking back and forth. Duke. You guys have all been talking back and forth with Celestial and he's responding. So keep, you know, keep it polite, keep it nice, and he'll get your questions answered, it seems, if he can. Uh, yeah. Every time, just looking through his thread, there's always some really good information about what's coming up. Mm-hmm. Yep. All I right. mean, over the weekend, he was tweeting watching football, so you know the dude's <laughs> serious. Yeah. All right, it's time to travel to the Peak of Serenity, the home for all monks in Zen. Pilgrimage. Monks assemble! At Ash Ver- uh, Viridian on Twitter asked us, supposedly they wiped all the 100 monk talents. Anything we would like to see in their stead? So this is a rumor that came up from some people in Method. Uh, they indicated in one of the, the <coughs> builds now in the Family and Friends beta um, that, Which they're not legally allowed to talk right. about. They're not there allowed to do. There was an NDA on the friends and family beta. Right. So, rumor and speculation. Supposedly mm-hmm. all the 100... Uh, what was that? The possibly hearsay. Yeah, possibly hearsay. <laughs> yeah, so we don't know for sure. But let's assume they've killed all the 100 monk talents. Is there anything we would like to see instead? I want a talent that makes disc priests around me heal for 50%. <laughs> can i get that as a talent is, is that possible i mean just around me i don't want to like 50 percent across the board nerf i just if i'm in a group with a disc priest i want him to suck i was talking to uh one of my other brewmasters in, in drow about breath of fire not being utilized more like you get to this point where you have like a minute and a half of shuffle and you're like all right what the hell do i spend you know chi on i would like to use it on a boss like make a talent where breath of fire could be used on everything. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that dot would be great. Mm-hmm. Love it. That would be my only request is make that dot usable on bosses. Cause that would be a pretty badass talent. I would use it. Yeah, I would too. I, I really like what they did with rushing Jade wind, how they took one of our spells and made it better. You know, to expanding yeah, exactly. kick and, and added that new component. So, is there anything that we that we have in our spec that we could see as an upgrade uh, that we could do? Renewing mist. And what would it do? Uh, more controllable. You know, instead of it being random, if they don't fix it, I would I wouldn't mind seeing it as a level one hundred talent. Um, as far as more control, kind of like. Uh, a resto druid almost um yeah it's maybe. that's an interesting point i see that a lot on on twitter and the forums is like oh i want a spell that's more like the druid or more like the disc priest i want to absorb something like that and it's like they walk a really fine line because you have to keep the identity of the monk mm-hmm. it's like you start adding in stuff from other classes and if it works pretty much the same way it's like you, you start losing the identity so it's well, yeah, don't I get me wrong. I don't want to play like a druid. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I just wish Renewing Mist was more controllable like the spells from a druid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just using them as an example. Um, maybe like uh, priests, um, what's the spirit one where they put bubbles on everybody? Uh, spirit shell. shells? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, spirit shell. Um, maybe something like that, but something unique only for the monk. I would be very happy with that, but something controllable where you pop it, there's a bunch of Renewing Mist out, or maybe a spell where it buffs Renewing Mist. Um, not sure where. I, I don't know, kind of like a bubble, but not really, because I don't want to be a priest. I'm going to bounce ones. off yours a bit. I'm going to bounce off yours a bit, Nayuki, and I'm also going to steal from, mm-hmm. I want to say Sublift, but it might have been Reglitch. 
um, I want to see Revival change to just put Renewing Mist on everyone in my party. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, just they, Renewing Mist, everyone's got Renewing... Uh, Revival, everyone's got Renewing Mist, and then I can double uplift for some massive healing. Yeah, they talked about that on the, on the Monk Craft podcast. Um, that was there too, yeah. yeah. It's, the, the only problem it, with it would that be is an awesome so ability. broken, but... I guess a level 100 talent should be pretty broken because exactly you put it's it you put on really everybody thunder focus T you extend it further you'd have to make that not work with thunder focus yeah but look at the cost that that would require yeah. for one thing you're going to be spending a ton of mana up front and not getting a return for at least a GCD because the first revival tick doesn't happen well the first revival tick happens right away but it's a small amount mm-hmm. second you're going to need three you're going to need four chi for uplift so you gotta you gotta generate this chi somehow while these you renewing s- mists are ticking on you everyone can still take um chi brew chi so brew. you'll still chi have brew. that right. available so right. now after i've gone through two chi brews in order to get my four chi and do double uplift now i need to come up with three chi in order to do thunder focus t before the before renewing mist runs out and so in 18 seconds, this, I need to do all of this. Damage. And if I can do that in 18 seconds, I deserve to get another 18 seconds of renewing mist on everyone <laughs> in my group. <laughs> because you're, you're, you're talking, it's nine GCD. It, what? No, it's uh, 18 seconds is going to be about 12 GCDs. Yeah. Exactly. And if So I've be- got 12 actions I can do with all of this on, which means I'm sitting here mashing my, key, my, mashing my face into my keyboard, hoping I'm hitting the right keys. Yeah. yeah, and if there's a lot of damage going <clears throat> out, I think you have to be preemptive because if you want it as a burst, like Duke said, you have to prepare yourself with four mm-hmm. chi, then three chi, with the renewing mists on everyone before that damage goes out. Otherwise, it's a white. Yeah, because the the real power of renewing mist isn't the hot. The real power of renewing mist is the interplay with uplift. Correct. Yeah, I would like to see for Windwalkers. I would like to see a change to Fist of Fury. Like do a replacement like they do with uh, spinning crane kick and rushing jade wind, where it makes it like a a super generator. Like you are, you get a whole bunch of chi. It's like if you're hitting things, you're you're channeling chi, essentially and getting chi back, um, and then you have that to dump, and it's you're getting energy back. So it's basically a way to because right now when you're using fist of fury, it's like you get your your chi up, and it's like oh I need a lot of energy pump fist of fury and you're doing damage while your energy is reticking i would like to see kind of a, a way to uh hit something and get a whole bunch of chi get all your chi filled up um i would like to see that as a replacement so maybe like a storm of storm of kicks it's not quite spain and crane kick but like uh i guess chun li's uh, attack you're just doing a ton of uh kicks hmm. around around that'd be kind of cool i'm i'm not a creative person so I can't think of anything. Just give me back the unlimited, unlimited, or the unlimited chi for ten seconds, and I'll be a very, very happy. Camper. I, I really hope that one survives. <laughs> that was holy crap. Just give me that. Just like, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm more than happy. All right. Any thoughts for what you would like as a brewmaster talent captain? Redo avert harm. Make it an actual raid wall. Like something where it protects the raid, but I don't die. Right. Because right now, I mean, like, you pop that shit on Thok, on a heroic, goodbye. You're, you're dead. There's no living from that. And it's just, it, I like the idea of it, but just make it to the point where you can live. and Or something. I mean, we just, we don't really have that many raid utility besides their statue. And compared to like other tank classes where they got raid walls and banners and this, that, and other thing, monks are really lacking. We have avert harm, but you got to do it with Zen. So, you know, you you really essentially have two, but you got to combine them for one. It's just they need to do something there. Maybe uh, I don't know, make it where it's just everybody reduce damage for thirty seconds for twenty percent or something like that. I really don't know, um, but. That's one ability that I wish they would redo. That's for damn sure. I just what have no a, idea. Go I'm sorry. Um, what about a talent that allows you to continue um, your rotation while you pop Zen Med? 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce off that too. Turn Zen Med into a raid wide cooldown as a raid wide touch of karma. There you go. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that in a heartbeat. Yeah, I, <laughs> One you just stole my error. I was thinking about the whole time waiting. <laughs> I have the perfect name for it too Karmic Fist. You turn the karma back around and just because right now it's just a touch of karma. You turn this right. into a karmic fist and it's like probably you would have to keep it to like a three second or something like that. Like you have to know mm -hmm. big damage is coming in mm -hmm. and you just hit that area wide and all the damage is reflected back on the boss. That would be overpowered. But awesome. It's a level one hundred <laughs> talent. That's the thing. All these people say overpowered. It's a level one hundred talent. Yes, That's it's true. gonna be overpowered. Yeah, but it'll be awesome. But if they did that, put it on like a five minute cooldown. Make it to yeah. the point where you can't. You can only use it once a fight, or maybe twice if it's one of those really really long fights. But something that you know makes monks stand out. Like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, monks got that badass raid cooldown. Let's use it here when the excessive damage is going out, and it'll really bring brew. I mean, brew masters just keep getting the nerf bat over and over again. Give them. Give them something. All right, you take away all our damage. Cool. Give us some kind of a raid something that makes monks really stand out again. Yeah. Um, that would I think be you're. I think you're already seeing that a bit with them talking about um, vengeance only going towards active mitigation, and not uh, contributing to DPS. Yeah, I saw that too. The big change for the for the tanks. So um, your vengeance is going to be more attack power. It's going to be more uh, for your mitigation talents. So. Your your role as the high DPS uh, tank is not going to be uh, around very much anymore. So that's an mm. interesting change as well. It, the DPS was always cool, but it, to me, it's just the way the monks play as a tank. Uh, putting up shuffle, the, the high guards, the statue. I mean, even make, like, you know, change statue. You know, make that a raid cooldown. Where your statue, anywhere, you know, anyone 20 yards away from the statue is protected in a barrier. Something. Something to give monks more of like, hey, this is a monk. They had this badass raid cooldown. You know, they don't do shit for damage anymore, but they do that. Let's bring that, you know. Give them something. I don't know. Push that forward. You know, it's a level 100 talent, like you said. Mm -hmm. You know, make it pop. Valen has an interesting suggestion in the chat room in the dojo. He says, instead of healing orbs dropping for Windwalkers and uh, Chi regen orbs, we get those too. So we have the the green ones and we get the uh, gray uh, ones. the gray ones. Yep. Mm -hmm. So have Fury orbs, maybe red ones that uh, drop that have a chance to give you 2% bonus to your favorite stat, stacking to like 10 or 15%, something like that. So, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, you can even make that a hundred, a level hundred talent, and raid yep. members could pick them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that would train like them. Mini... That would see that's a way to train the DPS to step <laughs> on the green balls too. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> make them just slightly yeah. a different shade of green, so you can tell the difference, but not if you're not paying attention. <laughs> so it's like all the DPS will be running around trying to find the the DPS <laughs> balls, and they're like, "Oh shoot, I just got healed! Damn it!" <laughs> And <laughs> which one of these green balls is it? The one that helps me do more damage. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what we're asking for. That's all we're asking for is to yeah. mix up everyone's balls. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's move into our, uh, our host projects and some blogs in the community. So uh, as Captain mentioned earlier, uh, he's a dev at SimCraft. He handles both the Windwalker and the Brewmaster. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh SimCraft is basically, it's just a simulator. Um, it basically takes, you know, your character, import one, or you could do whatever you want, and it gives you an entire sheet. You know, it'll run like a patchwork-style fight for tens and tens of thousands of times if you want. You get the computer for it. You got the time. But, you know, at the end, you'll get a whole, you know, printout sheet. All right, you know, your agility is, you know, X, you know, here. You know, your best in slot is actually haste after this point. And it's, I mean... I think Ask Mr. Robot's got it a little bit now. They're getting into a little bit of the, the sim, but I mean, SimCraft has been around, and we really have you know stepped it up. And it, you guys really should just check it out for yourself. I mean, it takes two seconds to download, and, and you're right in the program. You import your character, and 
poof. It's, it's, it's literally, it's easier for you to look at it, read it, and understand it than me trying to explain exactly what it is other than it's a simulator. And it, at the end, you will know everything about your character as far as, you know, what stat is better than what, you know, what you should be, you know, more focused on as far as, far as stats and gems and other things like that. Um, and now we even got a little bit of tank and stuff where, you know, you could put it um, where you take damage every 10 seconds. So you can even see, you know, how your vengeance scales or, you know, like, it's just, just check it out. I mean, it's yeah. really, it's simulationcraft.org. Awesome. It's really, it's just, we've been around for a while. Just check it out and you'll see what I'm talking about. I went about. back, I went there for the first time um, a couple weeks ago, actually, to determine whether or not i had a two-handed pull arm that was uh five uh 553 and then i had a one-hander 553 and a flex 540 uh so one-hander two one-handers and i was like okay well which one is going to be better and it actually i threw them both in i i went to asmus robot and got all my stats optimized the way they should be and then took those stat values threw them into simcraft ran them and found out actually the dual wielding is going to be better but i'm too lazy to get the enchant and the reforging so just waiting <laughs> for the either 553 to drop so i i thought that was really interesting it's able to to get that answer for me it's like okay which is better two-handed or, or dual wielding oh yeah it's yeah. i use it all the time my raid team you can usually ask them that i'm usually running sims in between gear upgrades you know it works really well with aspects or robot because you pop in your gear you actually can hit the import to SimCraft button, and yep. it allows you to just pick a bunch of different specs. And yeah, I did the same thing. I had a, I have a heroic staff, I have a normal Warforge, and a normal offhand. And for me, the staff is a 5k DPS increase. So <laughs> that's that's what I'm running with. But that's 50,000 iterations and a couple yeah. of cups of coffee in between. But uh, yep, yep. <laughs> it's fantastic for um, if you really want to try to get the most out of the base stats, so it's only your skill holding you back. Um, that's a, it's a fantastic tool, and I highly recommend it. So if you have any uh, any problems with the SimCraft for your Windwalker or Brewmaster, you know where to go. If you think no, it's not giving you the right answers. I would praise better. <laughs> if you have questions with the models behind the Monk SimCraft, you can address them to us. But if your SimCraft isn't broken, Call Bill Gates. I know he does technical support. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Even for Max. I like it. <laughs> okay, so another thing that happened this week was, uh, or actually the last couple weeks, Kung Fu Healing. It's a weekly article yes. on the Blizz Master Network by this weird named monk. Uh, was it Daikatsu? Yes, Daikatsu. <laughs> I've never heard of him. Yeah, neither have I. Oh, wait. <laughs> Doesn't sound very trustworthy. Right, so tell us about that, him. Duke. Well, I uh, they were looking for somebody to fill in. You've already got LeBlue on there doing great articles for Brewmaster. And they needed somebody to talk about the mistweaving stuff. And they're still looking for a lot more people. So if you have something to say about a class, go over there, check to see if the class that you want to talk about is open. And if not, contact Remedizi over Twitter. Contact uh, Blizzmaster through email. But basically, I'm starting off with just this is how to mistweave right now in 5.4, which is great because obviously the, the article this week was about haste after that huge, hey, no more haste breakpoints uh, bomb dropped on Tuesday night. Uh, my articles go up Wednesday morning. Uh, I believe it's 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p. Uh, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern. And we're just covering one thing at a time. Article coming up next week is uh, talking all about crit. After that, we're going to talk about mastery. Then we're going to put everything together and start talking about how to mist weave and fist weave. And from there, we'll see how we go. Okay. And so, yeah, check out the Blizzmaster Network. That's blizzmaster.com. Is that correct? Yes, blizzmaster.com. And you can see me. It's the big green fat monk. Yeah. And so Blizzmaster Network is, is pretty cool because they do all different... Uh, Blizzard game, so it's not just World of Warcraft. So if you're interested in Diablo and and <laughs> Heart of the, uh, Starcraft and Heroes of the Storm, uh, you can uh, you can go there and check that out. All right. Uh, speaking of blogs, though, there's a Brewmaster blog that is up and coming. Uh, it's called the Brewmistress blog, 
So she has some really great information about the class and the current raid tier, uh, including boss-by-boss uh, -boss breakdowns of talents, glyphs, and even trinket choices. So it's a good design and good color choices, I think. Great info. Uh, you can see that a brew mistress with only one S at the end instead of two, dot blogspot.co.uk. You can follow her on Twitter at xxkitten underscore xx. All right, and I understand there is a add-on that someone will talk about. Oh, the bosses killed add-on. Yep. yep, I saw yep. that on MMO Champion. Uh, it's actually add that in. if you're like a casual raider and you do flexes and you do LFRs, it's actually a really awesome tool because you just you pop open your little dungeon cube journal thing, and, and it literally right on the right hand side it. Nice little clean tabs. It'll tell you, you know, what bosses you've killed and what bosses you haven't. I mean, it'll say, you know, two out of three, two out of four. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly what ones you killed and what ones you haven't. It's it's a neat little tool. Um, I really wouldn't use it all that much, um, but more of the casual sides, I'm sure, or people that, um, you know, actually I probably would because I hunt down pets. I like pets. If you got pets, send it to me. Um, <laughs> But I Does mean, it work on Flex it, as well? Yeah, it, Flex, LFR. Um, I don't know if it, it does regular rating, but anything in your little journal, um, it does Flex and LFR. And to me, that's you know, that's really all the you really ones, need it yeah. for. Yeah. yeah, so you don't um, have to click through each one to see exactly. which ones you've done and stuff. I'm that's assuming really it does world bosses as well, like Ordos and uh, Malak and the Celestials. I, that's actually... I I'm not. Know. I used uh, saved instances for that. Yeah. To show me world bosses and celestials and all that stuff. All right. Yeah, it's part of. I use LVI and that's part of yeah, that. Yeah, same here. So. LVI. Same. Everyone does. Yeah. But you should. <laughs> you yeah. should use it. Except for all the errors that pop up half the time. Uh, what? I get no errors. Yeah. You need to update your shit. I, so I do. Other stuff <laughs> I get <laughs> DBM <laughs> errors. Yeah. I. Uh, I actually use VEM, Voice and Counter Mods. I replaced both Bigwigs and TVM and got VEM. Um, it is literally amazing. It, hmm. Any raider should use it. And, I mean, it, it'll literally put a little... You guys remember back in the day um, in Wrath, I forget the name of the add-on, where it'll literally point an arrow. Like, you go over yes. there. Tom, Tom. Hey, remember that add-on? Yeah. They... Literally, voice and counter mods like smashed all these add-ons together. I mean, it's got the Malkaril Helper add-on built right in it. I mean, it's got so many of these add-ons built right into this. And on top of it, you got this hot chick telling you, "Hey, blah blah blah, move, ha, go over here." Um, income and damage. I mean, it's literally. I wouldn't. I mean, it's like if you don't know what, like, if you go into a fight and you have no idea what's, the, you won't die, because you'll see a little green like circle. You, you know, you want to go in there, or you want to avoid it. I mean, it's... I replaced all my boss add-ons with just that one add-on. And, I mean, Malker... You, have you guys used the Malk Helper at all? Malker Helper? Couple times, yeah. The little pie chart? Mm-hmm. Built right in. And on top of that, it'll put little circles all over the room, to, as far as... So you can see, like, all right, there's a big, <coughs> big circle. I need to go stand in that so, you know, I don't wipe the raid in. My raid leader yell at me. Interesting. Because <laughs> you know one wants to get yelled at. No. All right. Well, I think awesome. I think we need to be getting out of here pretty soon. We got any shout outs? I got a couple shout outs actually. Go for it. So uh, uh, earlier this week, I spent a bunch of time finishing up my Timeless Isle rep, and I actually I met a fellow Windwalker monk on the Timeless Isle, part of the CTR Guild, Zaikai. Uh, he watches the show. Uh, and I've uh, been able to help out with some stuff, but he actually grouped up with me, and we have two Windwalkers uh, with a uh, rep buff, pulling everything in sight, Storm, Earth, and Fire, with a uh, Glyph of Afterlife, so you get the healing spheres after mm -hmm. every kill. You can literally just decimate everything up there. So a couple hours, I finish off my Shao Hao rep. I got a nice golden sparkle pony now. So, nice. Yeah, big, yesterday uh, was yesterday was brilliant for rep. You had all the buffs, <laughs> every buff <laughs> in the world is like plus forty four percent. So I, yep. I think I jumped up about three or four k yesterday, just running around for a little bit. So I've still got a ways to go though. 
Yeah, so big, you know, big thanks to Zakai, and also, so I started to PvP a little bit as a Windwalker, and so now I got to give a shout out to Tu Wong Fu. Uh, he's been up at night with me, been able to run some twos together, but he's been kind of showing me the ropes with uh, PvP, uh, <clears throat> what to do for crowd control, and a lot of other stuff. So yeah, with his help, I was able to get a lot of conquest gear, and uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the help from both you guys. Well, if you find any more PvP monks, send them my way because we need to get that PvP roundtable going eventually. <laughs> I think I had like one person that was like, yeah, I'll talk. Hey, we just doubled. Yeah, yeah. we got two now. Woo! All That's right, any other fun. shout outs we got? I'll uh, give a shout out. Uh, Drow, uh, we are looking for an exceptional healer, preferably a monk one. Um, you could go to you know drow.org. Um, D R O W dot org. Um, D R O W. Hold on, writing this down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey! Don't you <laughs> hey, be poaching my mystery I, for damn it! I, I wasn't trying to poach, but if you want to come, I mean. Now know. they are horde side. Try not to hold that against them. Oh, uh, there we go again. <laughs> yeah. I'm outnumbered here, but that's okay. Yeah, <clears throat> it's whatever. Um, but. We're a great bunch of guys, relaxed. We're focused on you know progression, but at the same time, you know we're not a bunch of screaming children. Um, we're not gonna you know we're gonna talk to you like adults. Everyone's twenty five and above. Um, just apply. I mean, you're not gonna know if you're you know you're capable of you know being in a heroic until you try. Yep. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to try, go and apply. If not, no biggie, no harm, no foul. All right. Um, well, I think you came to the right it. place to ask for Mist Weavers. So. <laughs> yeah. Apply. Do it. All right, guys. It's time to get our furry butts out of here. But first, let's go see those awesome five-star reviews. So this week, we didn't have any reviews from the U.S., but we do have some from the U.K. All so right. uh, Jimothy666 uh, gave us a five-star review. He said that uh, someone needs to get a better mic or turn down the sensitivity. The constant background noise and loud typing is very distracting. Well, I hope that we improve that this week. Uh, it's an so, awesome five-star review, by the way. Yes, I know. It's like, <laughs> you guys are awesome, except for when you suck. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Jimothy. I appreciate that. Uh, Hataka from the UK also said, Great podcast, informative and funny, just what I need on my long journey to college every day. Keep up the good work and move to a time zone where I can watch it live. Uh, yeah, about that. Um, <laughs> You pay for it, I will move out to Scotland, no problem. Well, I like Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so everyone, please rate us on iTunes. It does help out a lot. Subscribe on YouTube or on Twitch.tv. As part of the Monk community, if you have a blog, website, or person you want to see on the show, reach out to us via email at monkmeditation at gmail.com. The Monk community is the best one in the world of Warcraft. We want to showcase it. So Daikatsu, how can the dojo best reach us? best way to reach us as always is through twitter and you can follow chai t at wow monk nayuki can be found at nayuki underscore ctr air can always be found at air monk i can be found at Daika at daikatsu ctr with no underscore and our newest member captain crunch can be found at kptn crunch all right thank you all for listening you can watch us live in two weeks on monday december 18th at 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern time on twitch.tv slash wow monk well you can also catch us after the fact on itunes stitcher twitch.tv or monkmeditation.com where you can buy the host a cup of monotine for bringing you the best monk discussion on the interwebs and that wraps up this episode of monk meditation may your bruise be strong and your heart stronger Take care, everybody. Thank you.